Good afternoon and welcome to Women Enabled Life. We're so glad you are joining us today for our second Facebook Live event. My name is Kaula Wakaf and I'm the Legal Fellow at Women Enabled International. Hello everyone, I am Carla Villarreal Lopez. I am also Legal Fellow at Women Enabled International. Uh, Women Enabled International is an organization that works on the intersection of women and disability rights worldwide for advancing the rights of women and girls with disabilities. Also, we focus our work on advocacy and education and work related with issues to, um, of women and, and girls with disabilities that are affecting them worldwide. And now we are here with Professor Arlene Cantor. Hello. Professor Arlene Cantor, so honored to have you here. Honored to um, be here. For some of you who may not know Professor Elaine Kander, which, uh, which is going to be so weird, uh, she is a visiting scholar at the Harvard Law School. She is the founder and director of the Disability Law and po Policy and Law Program at the Syracuse College of Law. She is also a professor at the law school and she teaches uh, human rights law and disability law. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to start this off, um, can you please, I know that a lot of students are wondering how did you start off your career and uh, what motivated you to start and love disability uh, rights? So can you please tell us a little bit about this? Sure, briefly, I'll just say that when I went to law school many centuries ago, there was no such field as disability rights law. I was trained as a women's rights lawyer, but as I met many women and, and the experiences that they had in mental health facilities, in prisons, and facing discrimination as women with disabilities. I decided that really this is an area that needs legal advocacy. I had um, family connections and other volunteer opportunities working with people with disabilities. And I remember deciding that's what I wanted to do and everyone looking at me say, but there is no such field, but there became a field. And now 30 years later, I'm proud to say that it's a growing field of law. Professor wow. Kanter, we know also that you had the experience for working on the drafting the CRPD. Uh, can you tell us more about this experience? Sure. Uh, from 2001 to 2006, the United Nations embarked on a pretty difficult task, and that is drafting a treaty on the rights of people with disabilities for the first time. Before that, people with disabilities were protected by international instruments, but not a treaty, not law. And so the UN worked um, for those five years in drafting the first Convention on the Rights of People mm -hmm. with Disabilities. And my role is really in the background, helping to frame legal language and ideas that people with disabilities themselves were putting forth. I think the most important thing that we can learn from that experience is that for the first time, people with disabilities themselves, including Rep. Stephanie Ordaleva, who's mm -hmm. the director of Women Enabled International, and other self-advocates were literally at the table demanding not only their place, but ideas that they wanted included in the convention. And those of us with legal training helped to facilitate the development of language around those ideas that came from people with disabilities themselves. It was truly, for me, a life-changing experience to see people with disabilities mm -hmm. from all over the world um, basically influencing the development of international law. And it continues to be an amazing process. Thank you. It definitely changed the um, whole way the world looks at people with disabilities, including women with disabilities. So thank you for your work. Um, I know uh, that we, uh, you had a lecture today, which was amazing at the Harvard Law School. And um, can you please share um, the main point of your lecture and the topic today and how this will um, probably affect your new writing project in the future? Sure, sure. Um, mm -hmm. Today, I was, I've been a visiting scholar here and really am honored and privileged to have been invited to give a talk today, um, sponsored by the Harvard Disability Law Project. And what I wanted to really discuss today was not only just the CRPD, but the CRPD in the context of human rights law. I think it has a lot to teach us about how human rights law should develop. And in this day and age, when people are saying that human rights law has no value, it's the end of human rights law because, look, wars haven't ended and people still suffer, I wanted to really make a case that the CRPD can give us hope that it is changing people's lives on the ground in various countries. This treaty has been used as an organizing tool for people with disabilities to demand their rights, for families to not feel such shame when they have children with disabilities, and for people with disabilities to believe that they have a right to be employed and to live as equal citizens. Mm -hmm. So my pitch today, really, in my, my paper, is, um, is to talk about what I see as very hopeful about the CRPD, as well as some of the challenges, 
And I'll be developing this into a larger project, really looking at how human rights treaties generally, and the CRPD in particular, um, can be used to, for social change, ultimately. Um, Professor Cantor, we know that you serve as director of the Disability Law and Policy Program at Syracuse University Law School. So we would like to uh, know more about the activities of this uh, program. Right. I started it because there were students who were interested in becoming disability rights lawyers. And then, a few years ago, we started an international program, which gave me, really, I don't want to say the best students we've ever had, but clearly has enriched the law school immeasurably by having Carla and Carla here. Um, as I, and to be able to have students from all over the world focusing on human rights and disability. So that's been really a major accomplishment, I think, of our program. And then we also have been very proud to say that of those students who come to us, almost without exception, we really, we, I, help them get jobs to do disability law when they graduate. And I see that as part of my role as their teacher as well, to make sure that they'll be able to practice in whatever setting they choose based on their knowledge and experience of disability law. And then the final and one of the best things about the program is it's made a safe space, I think, for people with disabilities who want to become lawyers, who maybe didn't think that they could in the past. And it's a law school that really, I think, welcomes and supports students with disabilities. And if we're not, then we better be, because that's part of who we are. Um, last question. We want to know also a little bit more about your experience with Women and Able International on the Commission on the Status of Women. Right. I have to say that um, I first met Stephanie Odeleva and heard about WEI several years ago. Um, and it's really reframed my whole thinking about the importance of self-advocacy and connecting with women around the world. Women Enabled International almost single-handedly has brought attention to the world about the situation, plight, challenges, and many attributes of women with disabilities. And we were invited several years ago by the Commission on the Status of Women to present a report about how women with disabilities are really invisible from reports that are filed with different UN bodies. And with the assistance of one of my wonderful LLM students from Kenya, Milanoi Koyot, we actually prepared a report that we presented to CSW with Stephanie's assistance and leadership that showed that when countries talk about even the development of rights for women, that women with disabilities still remain invisible. And that's got to stop. And that's, I think, one of the challenges of WEI is to move forward the issue of women with disabilities, and they've done an amazing job so far, and there's still work to do. Thank you, Professor Cantor, for your time. And thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope that this uh, is a useful uh, tool for you to be in touch with the world of Women Enable and to be in touch with this important talking from today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.